The 4x4 Club Challenge is brought to you by Bridgestone South Africa. <laughs> this is the fourth round of the Bridgestone 4x4 Club Challenge. The 4x4 competition where near standard 4x4s duke it out for top honours. This year Bridgestone introduced a new 4x4 club format and club members compete against each other and the top three crews from that particular club then go through to compete in the series final in November. So far we've already seen the guys and gals from the Suzuki Auto Club of South Africa, the Mercedes G-Extreme and Nissan 4x4 clubs compete against each other. This week it's the Isuzu Off-Road Club's moment in the spotlight and the organizers decided to head to one of South Africa's renowned terror trails for their competition. This is Mohadle 4x4 Trail near Brits and it's one of those venues that can dent a 4x4 and make drivers of 4x4s cry a little bit when they go to sleep. The Isuzu event got underway early on a Saturday morning with the Isuzu KBs and Frontiers and Troopers raring to go. But after a driver's safety briefing, it was first time for some measurements and inspections. The scrutineering process is a vital part of ensuring the safety of all the participants. But it's not only about checking for fire extinguishers and the general state of the vehicle. It's about making sure the playing field is equal for all. And that's why the marshal is measuring the ground clearance here. But getting up is another story. Now, I'm going to help me up here. Yep, it's a tough life being a marshal on the club challenge. But with the scrutineering drawing to a close, and with Daniel Barboza from Bridgestone having interrogated all the teams and filling in lots and lots of forms, it's time to get jiggy with it. The Isuzu Off-Road Club's competition is divided into two sections. A navigational challenge where the competitors have to navigate themselves through the bush to certain points and do it while sticking to a specific time. And then there are the traditional obstacles with those ever-present white poles. But this is Mojatle and you can bank on the fact that the challenges will be bigger, higher and more difficult. And that's just the way we like it. Welcome to Obstacle 1. A very easy looking descent between those omnipresent white poles. But as always, there's a bit of a catch. This is Robert and Leanne Hale, seasoned Bridgestone 4x4 campaigners. And they're in a big and lumpy Isuzu Trooper. This should be a dawdle for this experienced crew. Spectacles, testicles, we'll have to watch. It's wrong. Right, so with all of Robert's uh, parts in place, he heads into the obstacle. But uh oh, the big Isuzu takes out one pole. This obstacle is obviously not as easy as it looks, and that steep step the right front wheel has to clamber down is probably going to catch out a few competitors. So we suppose you're not very happy with that result, eh, Rob? No, not particularly. One right. ball down, never a good start. This is Jan van Gerwe and Estelle to Blanche in their Isuzu KB double cab. And if you've ever heard the expression of getting a monkey off your back, this is probably where it comes from. Yep, that's a monkey in the back of the Isuzu. The Marmoset monkey rides with the Isuzu and even sports a pair of, well, monkey pants. Anyway, back to the business of 4x4s. While the Isuzu goes through, Estelle's eyes seem to get bigger and bigger, but they make it through and incur no penalty points. This is Jakob Fulmer and Melvin Patton in the Isuzu with the lucky number 13. They're clearly intent on discussing all the variables and options here. And they're off, but that planning session bears no fruit as the Frontier kills one pole dead. This is Martin and Martin Jr. Scuri in another Isuzu KB double cab. Apparently Martin has some valuable intel on the day's action. So Martin, come on, tell us, what's going to happen the rest of the day? I've got no idea. I hope it's good. I like a challenge. Oh well, let's rather just watch the Isuzu go through the obstacle. Yep, that was about as exciting as playing fetch with a one-legged dog. And now, for the first time on the Ignition Channel, we will show you the chassis cam. Or the underside of the car angle as it completes the obstacle.
And how exciting was that, hey? Okay, let's rather focus on the marshal picking up a part of the Isuzu and returning said part to the owner. On that note, let's move on to obstacle two. Obstacle two involves a peculiar slope, a tennis ball that hangs from a tree and a narrow gate at the end of the obstacle, combined with a bit of a rut. The idea is that the 4x4 must touch the tennis ball on its way through the obstacle and then, obviously, miss the white poles at the end. It sounds pretty easy, but as we've always seen at obstacle one, it probably isn't. And here are first-timers Martin and Martin again. And because it's their first time, the friendly marshal decides to offer a lending hand. We conveniently provide you with subtitles for this section. And they're off. And blimey, they get through with full marks. Not bad for two first-timers. Well done, lads. And in another first for ignition, here's a brand new Isuzu TJ. OK, not really, it's a Jeep Wrangler. And although they can't qualify for the final here, Sean Niemant and Johan van Niekerk joined the Isuzu club for some 4x4 practice. After a lengthy planning session, and after, well, zipping up his window, Sean, sporting a very fashionable Isuzu shirt, is finally ready. And no. Amazingly, the Isuzu TJ hits a pole. That's an unexpected turn of events. Got the tennis ball with a nose. We were thinking we might have to hit it with a windscreen, but uh, yeah, no, I think it uh, didn't go too bad here. Let's see. Yeah, hit the pole, unfortunately. And here's a brand new Isuzu Grand Cherokee. Well, actually, it's a Jeep. And this is Werner and Armand Skar, an experienced team that has also come to play with the Isuzus at Mujatle. Inside the Grand Cabin, you can see the angle of lean here, thanks to a remote dangling from the mirror. They get through with 100 points in the bank. And here is Team Dup, or Ignis and Gerd Duplessis, in an Isuzu KB. Not being a man of many words, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Ignis tackles the obstacle with his dad in the passenger seat. Ignis can hardly contain his excitement. There we go, man, lacquer, man, lacquer. And they do really well, bagging a hundred points. Time for a visit to the shops. When we return, the going gets a lot, lot tougher, as some teams really get unstuck, as in really, really unstuck. Welcome back to round four of the 2013 Bridgestone 4x4 Club Challenge at the tough Morgatli 4x4 Trail near Brits in the Northwest Province. And we go straight back into the action at obstacle three. Here's yet another short but deceptive obstacle. The team simply have to conquer a short climb over an axle twister and turn hard left with wheels in the air to exit through a narrow gate. Simple? Not so much, no. Aha! Here is talkative Team Dup again. They go for it. And they get through without any major dramas. Well done again. And here's another Jeep. This time it's Danny Daniels and Chart Skierpers in a Grand Cherokee. But oh dear, Danny and his Jeep just didn't have enough momentum to get over that axle twister. He rolls back and goes for it again, this time with a lot more, well, right foot. And he's through. Christopher and his wife, Leanne Novak, are next. After inspecting the challenge, 
Christopher has a clear-cut plan. As, as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. Sure, we've heard that one before. Let's see how much dust the Isuzu can kick up. He putters along at a snail's pace, but now it's that twisty climbing business that lies ahead. With Sunny acting as spotter, cracky mate, he crawls that Isuzu through the obstacle as if it wasn't even there. As slow as possible, as fast as necessary. Indeed. Well done. Thanks a lot, uh, cameraman. We what? appreciate it. This is brand new Isuzu Jimuti. OK, not really. It's just a Suzuki Jimny. And it's piloted by the experienced Bridgestone crew of Marius and Esme Minar. There could be an issue here. This Jimny runs with open differentials. So theoretically, it won't like this axle twister one little bit. Marius sets off. But with wheels in the air and insufficient momentum, the little Suzuki grinds to a spinning halt. With Esme helping direct a new line of attack, Marius backs up and gives it stick. And he's over. So one day when I'm big and I'm an Isuzu, I probably will have lockers. <laughs> Aha! Here's another Isuzu again. It's Anton and Melanie Mulder and their brood of children. Clearly, Anton has a plan here. Brilliant plan, that. Well, let's see if this crafty strategy works. With his main spotter stationed on top of the climb, with a cameraman following her every move, Anton lets his Isuzu do the talking, and quite successfully, and without any drama, conquers the obstacle. So his crafty plan certainly seems to be paying dividends here. Our next obstacle is a tricky little descent. But again, there's a catch. It's a very steep step in the middle of the obstacle that causes wheels to lift and white poles to jump into your way. Here is Anton and his troop of co-drivers again. This time, the KB grinds to a halt on the cross axle. But when Anton engages the rear diff lock, the Isuzu continues on its merry way. But oh no, they've also taken out a pole. This is looking rather tricky. This is Yako and Barry van der Lith in another Isuzu. This is a shorty frontier. And yes, they get through with maximum points. Good job. And here's Yako and Esme Besedenhout and their kids, who had left the regularity raid section ages ago. Now they're tackling the Mojatle obstacles. Inside the KB, Yako and Esme try to ignore the fact that there's a camera in their car. But the kids, they're somewhat intrigued. Anyway, let's see how they roll through the obstacle. They do a grand job. Inside the KB, Esme is quite elated. <laughs> Johan Blanche and Marlene Muller have been competing in the Bridgestone 4x4 events for years. And this year, they're competing in their single cab Isuzu KB. Amazingly, Marlene seems quite excited even on their way to the start of the obstacle. Sure, let's ride with the crew then. <laughs> that was quite a ride, and it's a full house of 100 points in the bank. So let's scoot along to the next obstacle. Well, first, there was the actual road to get to the next obstacle. Yep, as the day dragged on, the more difficult the challenges got. Here, as Johan and Marlene demonstrate, the teams had to pilot their 4x4 through some sets of narrow gates over a serious axle twister. The catch here are straps placed in strategic positions on the ground. The teams have to aim their 4x4s so the front wheel lifts over those respective straps. Hit one, and it's 25 points down the drain. And there was still a tight turn and steep rutted climb to contend with. Easy? Clearly not. Humphrey Jones and Rian Becker in an Isuzu KB do a reasonable job over the first part of the obstacle. But that tight turn catches them out. Now they have to make a decision. At this point, Rian gives Humphrey 
probably the worst advice he could. Whoa, I'm plugged. So Humphrey takes out one pole, then another, and another. So in the end, they score zero points. Oops, that may not have been the best option, lads. Yeah, I... Isuzu Trooper V6 crew, BC and LM Pretorius, have quite a unique problem here. The Trooper has massive amounts of articulation, so getting a wheel to lift off the ground would be an achievement in itself. Never mind lifting a wheel as they please. So the Trooper goes in and barely gets a wheel off the ground. Oh dear. And it also takes out one pole. So that's 75 points lost. Here's Raymond and his wife, Anel Martin, in their trick little Suzuki Jimny. This Jimny has an aftermarket suspension and a rear differential lock. So it's pretty much unstoppable. Well, that's the theory. Raymond aims the Suzuki and gets some good airtime over those straps. He makes the turn and all the way out of the obstacle. That was really good. This is a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. And as far as 4x4s go, this is about as good as it gets front and rear lockers, an electronic sway bar disconnect system, and an extra low crawler gear ensures that this machine is nigh unstoppable on any 4x4 track. And off goes Corne van Ameva, guided by co-driver Philip Wurstazen. Blimey, the shorty Rubicon takes out three poles. That was, well, unexpected. That's how <laughs> not to do it. <laughs> on that bombshell, let's head to the shops again. On the flip side, we join the Rubicon at the next obstacle, which gets even worse. And a man in a Suzuki Grand Vitara gets a little bit worked up. We're back at the Mojatle 4x4 trail in the Northwest province. It's time to head to obstacle six, which turns out to be the Achilles heel of many a competitor. This challenge features a very steep climb and a tight turn at the top of the mound of dirt. That turn is very important. Get it wrong, and well, you just don't want to go there. Thankfully then, our first client is that super duper Jeep Rubicon. It can only get better than the previous obstacle. So let's see how they deal with this challenge. Oops, it really doesn't look like it's this Rubicon's day. Cornet manages to get the Jeep to move forward a wee bit, but then, oh greatness, the Jeep has firmly wedged itself on the obstacle, with the four wheels turning aimlessly in the air. So it's recovery time. It's definitely funny. If you don't get stuck, you haven't pulled by four, eh? <laughs> First, a new Isuzu KB is called into the fray to try and drag the Jeep from its predicament, but it doesn't manage to budge the Wrangler at this funny angle. So the marshals bring forth another recovery vehicle, which shall remain nameless. And so finally, after more than 30 minutes, the Jeep is towed out of its stuckness. The next victim is the frontier of Gustav and Annelise Erasmus. Surely they will have a big problem here. But with a better line, they don't, and they get through with full marks. Great job. Next we have Albert Kravitz and his wife, Baron Dean, in an Isuzu KB. Albert initially aims well, but that right wheel also goes over the edge, leaving the KB stranded. And Albert takes a slight rollback to get a better line to conquer the obstacle. Second time round, he makes it stick. This is Colin Rautenbach and Susan Carter in a Suzuki Grand Vitara. It hasn't been a great day for this crew after they lost a tire on the reg raid section. Unfortunately, it was about to get even worse. Right, same, same story, spectators, 10 meters, please. So that other Bucky is again called into action, dragging the Suzuki from its stuckness. So what happened here? I just I just couldn't see the direction of the line, so when I came in, I was just like totally, totally uh, to the right. On that calamity, let's move on to the last obstacle of the day. The last obstacle is really tough. Well, it seems to be. 
It's a steep climb with some deep ruts and those irritating white poles. This is Jaco Helberg and Stefan Griesel in yet another Isuzu Frontier. Let's see how far they get before getting stuck. And they don't get stuck. Instead, they get 100 points. Good job there. Next is Steven and Sunette King in their Isuzu KB double cab. With low range and that rear differential locking gauge, the Isuzu gets underway and also completes the test without any worries. Maybe it's not as difficult as we thought. Ah, another familiar face. It's Vimpy Olafide, or the Vimpernator. As one of the few individuals in the world that is fluent in Lichtenbergian, Vimpy also has a certain flair when it comes to 4x4 driving. That's because he's pretty good at it. And yes, they also make it, which brings us to the last contestant of the day. And it's Team Susie Quattro again. In the Suzuki Gran Vitara, they got hung up like a tortoise with no legs. We're really holding thumbs that Colin makes it here. He hasn't had a great day so far. It's been an interesting, hectic day. <laughs> been a long day. But yeah, I think we just need bigger wheels. Oh, not again. The Suzuki, with limited clearance and traction control versus a locking rear differential, sadly makes no impression on this obstacle. We've got some limitations that we need to overcome first. <laughs> and on that, well, low note, it's time to tally the scores and see who came out tops on this tough Mojadle track. Before we go to the results, though, another brief reminder of the prizes that are up for grabs at every round of the club challenge. The three podium finishers respectively get a 10,000 Rand gift voucher from Bridgestone, a set of light force spotlights from Opposite Lock, and a hand winch, also courtesy of Opposite Lock. An environmental prize to the value of 2,000 Rand goes to the most environmentally friendly team. The overall winner of the challenge will drive off with a Conqueror off-road trailer to the value of 50,000 Rand. While the runners-up will receive a fully adjustable Tough Dog suspension worth 20,000 Rand from Opposite Lock. Without further ado, to the winners then. In fourth place overall, but the third place Isuzu, were Johan Blanche and his animated co-driver Marlene Muller in their single cab KB. Second place belonged to Jakob Fulmer and his co-driver Melvin Patton in a Frontier. And they win the set of Light Force Spotlights sponsored by Opposite Lock. First place belongs to another former and another frontier. Darby and his co-driver Chantel won the day and bagged a 10,000 Rand tire voucher from Bridgestone, South Africa. And that's our story. Next week we feature the 4x4 Community Forums Club event, which was also based at Mukhatli. However, it was a completely different game for this event. In fact, it was a whole lot of difficult. Till then. The 4x4 Club Challenge was brought to you by Bridgestone. Your journey, our passion.